practitioner as well. We thank God that he is in our city in Chicago. Uh, we praise God for him. You've heard about him for years, and as I stated, God used him last year. Uh, he has a fine family as well. I believe he has two sons by the name of Brian, in fact. Uh, but anyway, um, his tapes are available, and I'll share more about that, uh, about his tapes from last year. But let me introduce to you, and may you receive, Ray Bakke of the International Urban Associates of Chicago, Illinois. Ray, come and share with us as the Lord gives you utterance. God bless you. Good morning, sisters and brothers. A year ago, I had the privilege of sharing something of an urban foundation in the Word of God for that which we're doing. Today I want to call it Volume 2. This will be something of an urban family album, a charismatic tour through 2,000 years of church history. I happen to believe that the Holy Spirit gave gifts since the New Testament and that those gifts have been for the building up of the whole body for 2,000 years. And to neglect those stories past is to deny the gift of teaching in the church and sometimes borders on blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. We are not here to recreate the kingdom or reinvent it really. But in many cases, we are here to recover some things that the church has lost. When my father wanted to tell us who we were, he got out the family album. I want to share some of the photos in the family album. My first comes from a letter, a letter which is written about the year 110. It's the story of Ignatius of Antioch. Antioch was the great mission church, and Ignatius was a pastor. And he was taken prisoner. And in the company of guards each night in prison, imprisonment, he wrote letters back home and letters to Christians to encourage them. One of those letters, when he got to the city of Smyrna, was written to the chief pastor of Ephesus, the great city church. The city church of Timothy and John. And guess who was the pastor of the church? None other than Onesimus of the Philemon story in the New Testament. You can check this out the best of Catholic and scholarship, uh, Protestant scholarship agree on this, a slave who stole money in Asia and had run away to Rome to get lost in the urban crowd, had found Christ through the reach out of the apostles while Paul was under house arrest. He'd become a believer and was discipled and Paul wrote a little 330 word letter in Greek and sent him back to Laodicea and Colossae where he was discipled and became part of an integrated slave master house church. And sometime later, 14 years after the last living apostle was banished from his pulpit in the same city, a pulpit seeking committee chose an international refugee to be the pastor of the great church in Ephesus. It reminds me in a climate of Proposition 187 and the fear of Americans that were being overtaken by the world. The browning of America, they called it in Time magazine. The, the Lord is bringing the whole world to the Londons, to the Parises, and to the Los Angeles, New York, Chicago's of our time. That's the Lord's business. It's the greatest migration in human history. But this early portrait, this wonderful photograph, shows how even in the New Testament, the gospel began in Ephesus with Paul, and 60 years later, the chief pastor in the city was an international refugee. A very important photograph. My second photograph today comes from a letter called Diognetus, written about 140 years after the cross. We're not sure. Somebody suggested Quadratus wrote it. Maybe he did. But if you pick up the book Library of Christian Classics, Volume 1, and look at this little letter, read particularly chapters 5 and 6, where the writer says, for the Christian, every 
foreign land is a fatherland and every fatherland is a foreign land and Christians dwell in all cities Greek and pagan alike and there were only those two in those days the Christians not only obey the laws of the land they far exceed them in their character they share their room and board on and on he goes chapter 6 as the soul is to the body the Christian is to the city that's where we get the phrase Christians are the soul of the city. Diognetus chapter 6. We are the conscience of the city. And chapter 6 verse 10 ends this photograph. To no less a post than this has God ordered them. They dare not try to evade it. Another photograph I got from the late Bishop Samuel in Egypt. 20 years ago or so, I was in Egypt doing some studies on churches and hostile cultures, particularly in the Middle East and North Africa, part of a doctoral program. Bishop Samuel died with Anwar Sadat. The president of Egypt was sitting at a parade and was shot by his own soldiers. Bishop Samuel was sitting behind him and was killed in the same burst of bullets. Bishop Samuel told a story I'll never forget. He said, you know how the deacons ministered in Alexandria in the second century? He said, birth control in ancient Greek cities was putting the babies on the porch or on the steps. The babies that were unwanted were put in the street. Anybody could pick them up. The women deacons, he said, organized to have nursing mothers sit in the plazas of the city square. And then they organized baby hunts to go up and down the streets of Alexandria and collect the unwanted babies. And they brought the babies to the plazas of the nursing mothers. And Bishop Samuel said, that's how the church grew here in Egypt in the second century. What an incredible photograph. E.A. Judge and a number of others have reported that in Judge's monograph from Oxford, social patterns of first century Christian churches, that most Christians not all, certainly, but most were lower echelon class people. They were artisans, freedmen, and slaves, he said. Many were garbage collectors. And writings in Judge and others, I've learned something about garbage collectors in early Greek cities. You see, they, the Greeks and Romans threw the bodies of the dead into the garbage. They had no other alternative. Because if you've read Plato, frankly, bodies aren't worth much. So they tossed them. And the particular bodies that were grotesque were the burn victims of urban fires and the bubonic plague victims of the rat fleas and those puffy corpses that had turned black and were full of disease were tossed in the garbage. And do you know what the photograph is? The photograph is of Christian garbage collectors collecting the garbage and then taking the bodies that they found in the garbage and bathing them and burying them separately. For even the unjust, they said, would be raised unto judgment. Garbage collectors bathed the bodies they found in the garbage because they knew there was going to be a resurrection. Has any of my theology ever made that kind of difference in the way I work in my city? Here's a photograph of Tertullian of Carthage. We owe him the word Trinity. He recognized that word doesn't occur in the Bible, but three persons are called God. And so in Latin, de Trinitate, he invented the word. He was a lawyer from North Africa. If you put together words from his 37th and 51st apologies, he's thundering at the emperor, and I love what he says. He says, we, meaning Christians, have filled up every place belonging to you. Islands, castles, caves, senate, prison, palace, city forum we leave you your temples only is that great <laughs> the early church had penetrated society from top to bottom we leave you your temples only christians salt and light in the city